Hi, I'm Randall. I'm a first time boat owner with 10,000 miles of open ocean sailing experience. I love classic boats and as a new owner, I'm more curious than ever about what goes into buying, fixing, improving, operating, and safely enjoying their magic and beauty. Join me as I talk to experts and share insights on all things related to older sailboats. If you're interested in affordable ways to get out sailing, you are in the right place. I just got a text from Walter Schultz who said, what are you doing goofing around on that boat? Why don't you come over to New Bedford and have some fun with us and go for a sail? So uh, you don't have to ask me twice on that one. I'm going to uh, knock off for the day, uh, head over, and uh, maybe we're gonna sail in a Shannon. Anyway, you're coming with me. Let's go. I'm meeting Walter on Moontide, which is a Shannon 55 and happens to be the last sailboat he ever built. Ahoy! <laughs> so we're gonna go out and have some fun. Yeah. We're not be gonna be uh, sailing Moontide. No. <laughs> we always sail, I always sail moon, moon Tide when I'm going somewhere. Ah. You go on a screw ship when you wanna go to someplace. And yeah. stay for his extended stay. Now we go to another, my next dimension. Okay. This is where I have fun. $10,000 boat. This is fun. Oh, I love it. You know, so do I. So what, uh, what am I looking at for a boat here? You're looking at a Mystic 30, uh, built by the Legnos Boat Company down in Rotten, 1978. It's 44 years old. I paid $10,000 for it a year and a half ago. Here we are. Welcome to Tinker. Oh, thank you. Irish Tinker, actually. I changed. The name of the boat was Tinker. I probably bought it because that was the name of it. I just added Irish because <laughs> in a day, my, three of my grandparents were born in Ireland. And when they came over, Tinker was a pejorative. You called somebody a Tinker. That was not, not a good thing. Oh. They were really not welcome. Both my grandmothers were servants in rich people's houses in New York. And uh, my other grandfather, he did bowl work, mostly on the subways in the city. I had been sitting up on the beach for three years, but I wanted a gaff rig boat. I had a Shannon 28 on a morning here for three or four years sailing by myself. Okay. And then it was, that was a different problem. The problem with that boat was the designer and the builder was still alive. <laughs> and I couldn't make the changes I wanted to make on a boat. And I built 50 or 60 of those things and they're all floating somewhere. So I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. You know, I mean, I designed that boat in 1978. Yeah. So I learned a little since then but I couldn't incorporate those changes without making the Shannon owners feel bad. So, you know, I did a lot of dumb stuff in 1978. It was a lot like a tattoo. It seemed like a good idea at the time. Uh, and so I was constrained on what I could do with that boat. So I sold it and then I was looking at a wood boat, a Concordia 31, and my daughter was looking for a boat and she found a picture of this thing sailing. And that hooked me. But we didn't know what a boat was in America. And then lo and behold, we found a boat 20 miles from here. No kidding. Yeah, it's sitting up on a beach in Marion. Ah. I went, wow. So I went over and when I got to this boat, I walked behind it. To, they had a ladder over here on a port side. And I saw the name on a transom and I bought it. Tinker. I've been tinkering with boats, and, you know, uh, it's just a, a family joke. Yeah, I did my usual, I checked the kill bolts, uh, kicked the engine, walked around it a little bit. The mast and rigging was all on the ground, and the mast is still pretty beat up. I haven't gotten to that yet. I will. I think the polite question you're not asking me is, why in the world would I be buying a $10,000 boat? Uh, it's because I loved them. Uh, and I knew I'd have a lot of laughs in this thing. I really did. You know, 
I mean, I got a big cruise ship there for traveling. I don't know where. Yeah. Anywhere but that's in the world. not sailing. Right. You get so far away from sailing on these big boats like that. I mean, that's got electric winches to pull Halyard up and down. Yeah. I want to sail alone. Yeah. I like sailing alone. I think I already told you I like sailing at night. So I saw this thing and um, and it worked. It had a bunk down below that I could fit. Yeah. Uh, steps are a little uh, steep. Uh, Peter Legnos must have been a very athletic uh, young man <laughs> in uh, 1978. I mean, this boat's 44 years old. get two things out of a boat like this. A, you're really sailing. You're really sailing. We're right down on the water, you feel the wind on your face. You feel, I got a dodger on here that I never put up. You feel the spray. Yeah. Uh, you feel close to nature. Uh, and it's peaceful. And it's serene. It's indescribable sailing if you haven't experienced it really just indescribable. Uh, I never got on a sailboat till I was 21. I worked in boat yards, but people work in boat yards, they don't sail. No. They never get the opportunity and they never make, you know, I'd been working in boat yards for years. I never got a chance. It was all Hindu up in a province town, a schooner head boat. I went out sailing with 30 other people uh, and it changed my life. Uh, there's a line, it was a Shannon owner, gave it to me. I had a hole in my heart that I didn't know existed for sailing. I went out that day, I bought a learn how to sail book, and I don't know how many years later, I, 10 years later, something like that, I started China. I was in college, I knew 200 people, at least from high school and colleges and everything else, maybe more, maybe 500. I didn't know one person who had a sail. We're in New York City. Right, right. New York City. So nobody knew how to sell and I had nobody to talk to. It. So I was just doing my thing, all trying to learn how to sell in all the wrong boats, too, by the way. That's another story. Not another episode. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to be learning how to sell in a sunfish, I can tell you. And that was, <laughs> that the, was my boat I learned. Yeah, uh, Christ. I kept falling in the water, embarrassing oh, myself. Yeah. Dumping girlfriends in the water. Nobody wanted oh, that low boom hit you right yeah, in the chin. Yeah, hit you in the uh, face, yeah. you yeah. fall in the water. I actually knew this was gonna come up. My bookkeeper yesterday I said, How much money do I have in this crate? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good question. A year and a half, 18 months, whatever the hell right. it is, almost two years. I have $13,384 and some change, all right? And I've been buying, this I bought in a consignment shop. Oh yeah. All right, that's going here because okay. it's too hard for me to reach that. Okay. Right. Yep. I wanna, I'm by myself. Yeah. It, uh, over there, you'll see when we pull the sails up, I took a windlass and bolted it down because on gaff rig boats, you have two halyards. Yep. You've got a throat halyard yep. and a peak halyard. That's a real problem uh, for a single hand. You know, one, so on them, even on my big schooners, Defiance and Sarah Jane, I took a wind. I also hit it. I didn't stick it up on a deck like yeah. that. Yeah. You know, I, had, I hit them below okay. so that I pressed the button for the throat and I pulled the peak up by hand okay. and I looked like I was really doing it. <laughs> See, what you get with a $10,000 boat, what you really get is you get a year-round activity. Yeah. If you get a boat that's all spiffy and shiny and doesn't need anything, you get a three or four, or depending on where you are in the country or the world, yep. you got a season. Okay, that's great. I've had a great season sailing this boat, even though I, I don't have the right hensels on it. That's another long story. <laughs> But uh, it doesn't stop you from having fun. That's right. I don't care how fast I'm going. I don't care who sails by me. I didn't design this boat. I didn't build it. <laughs> what do I care? All right, go. You, you know, like the boat. Go uh, call Peter Legnos uh, down in Groton and tell him uh, 
if the boat's slow. It's actually not. I had a, we had this boat out. I had uh, Kevin with me, and I don't know. We had 25 puffs to 30. Oh, nice. Yeah, and I oversailed it. I drove the decks right under the water. I was having such a good time. We got soaked. I didn't have, didn't even yeah. bother to put the dodger up, and the seas and spray were coming over, we were laughing, uh, and then I was in this spot where I had to get the main down, yeah. and you'll see it today. I I did some damage. Okay. That was about a week and a half ago. But lazy, I lost the lazy jacks on the port side, oh, yeah. so uh, when we drop the sails after we go out sail, <laughs> the sail. With lazy jacks, the sail, I can handle that sail yeah, by myself yeah. when it comes down. Yeah. Today, uh, I didn't get around to uh, fixing that. And you'll see it taped up. Touch briefly on single-handed or short-handed sailing. We get a bunch of questions from viewers. What's the checklist for a boat that's good for single-handed or short-handed sailing? What do you? What are the essentials? Short-handed is one. Single-handed is another. Yeah. Short-handed with Janet. No she's, problem. Right? She steers into the wind, and yeah, I pull yeah. the sails up on the. I mean, I the two of us were sailing not at young age, by the way. Yeah. All right. Not even 10 years ago, I had the schooner Defiance. The goddamn thing was almost 60 feet long. Uh, but I had windlasses to help me get the sail up. She held the boat into the wind. I had an autopilot on that yeah. boat, but she steered. Uh, I wasn't going out single-handed on a big thing like that by myself. Yeah. So now with that said, well, single-handed happens to really apply to this thing. Yeah. Well, first thing you've got to think about is the size of the boat. All right. You know, you're single-handing a boat. Uh, I've single-handed Shannon 50s and 43s, yeah. uh, but uh, actually I single-handed that big 55, <laughs> which is, but it's got electric winches yeah. and blah, blah. All right. So that's the first consideration. What do you think you can handle? If you're relatively new, not you don't have to be brand new, but if you're relatively new to sailing, I think the old, the old lines way back, back, back when I first come in, was you had to have a should have a boat under 40 feet. Yeah, that's why I designed the first boat to be 38 feet to okay. stay away from that number. Yeah, that's expanded now because they have two speed winches and things got a little easier. And the other thing is, you're looking at the guy that did it. I got hammered for years over it. it was lazy jacks. Yeah, then everybody started manufacturing sail catchers. Yeah, that's from the 1800s. I rigged the Shannon 38 after the first storm by myself because I had two people seasick, right, two <laughs> kids seasick. Right. That boat got lazy jacks instantly. I'm steering, point the boat up into the wind, it never stays up into the wind. Right. Uh, it drifts all over the place, right? I gotta get that sail up. Yeah. So what I did was I, rigged, I put that, obviously, because I got two halyards. Yeah. But I also had a wheel pilot. Yeah. The thing made, and I've had several, and it made me nuts. <laughs> All right, because yeah. it's basically Chinese junk. No matter what you do, you got a belt yeah. and you yeah. got a thing, and you have to kick the thing out, and it's always right here, yeah. and you're tripping all over the thing. It made me crazy on a 28. And I, I put two different ones on, and the second one was worse than the first one. single hand and you buy yourself you've got the wheel if it's a pedestal here like everybody has instead yeah. of this ring where are the winches where's the halyards yeah, yeah. you got to get them it means you have to leave the wheel that break on the side of a pedestal yeah nah doesn't work no right? you're going too slow you've got to have the boat pointing up into the wind right and you've got to get from there to there right? an issue that i actually have on this boat today I've kind of got that rigged, but I have to leave the wheel. Uh, what I'm doing now, of course, because I can, right, is I'm 
rig and an auxiliary switch right here to turn the windlass on. I'm not a kid anymore. You're yeah, going to jump yeah. back and forth. You're going right. to straight hold it into the wind. And I also jerk it around out here in Newport Harbor. There's a lot of commercial traffic. I yeah. don't like to aggravate these people sure. screwing around in their face. <laughs> they try to make a living. You know, yeah. They don't need some old dope like me uh, jerking yeah. around uh, all across the harbor. I mean, it kind of reminds me of some of the controls and what you said about your designs. Even the, uh, the 43, you said a lot of your clientele were a little bit less nimble. They're yeah, a little older. They're like so you, me. You put a lot of the controls back in the cockpit. That way, everything's pretty much accessible without leave, having to go on deck. You don't leave the cockpit. I don't yeah. leave the cockpit in this boat. Yeah. That's why I don't use the staysail. This yeah. thing has another sail up there. Okay. It's down below. That's a no-go. I mean, any fool can throw money up in here. The problem is... It's no fun. Yeah. All I'm doing is sending somebody a credit card right. or I'm signing a check. With, right. uh, that's it. Uh, yeah. uh, where's the fun? <laughs> right. The fun lasted maybe about 10 seconds. Yeah. The other thing I love is hanging out in consignment shops. Yeah. That's like a big candy store. Yeah. So when I go there, I paid $40 for two of these. Now it's all. Including I call the bronze? It. Yeah. Wow. And these are off, uh, they told me off a of sea Sprite. Oh, yeah. 25 or sure. whatever it is. Perfect. Because my problem here when I'm sailing, by the way, this, I had to get around, talk about not getting around the stuff. This, this, this is the jib sheets <laughs> off of Sarah Jane, which is a 42 foot schooner. Oh, uh, they happen to be handy and I tied them on and yeah. it, last year and they're still on. But I want to, I'm going to mount that back here. Right there. So when I'm at the wheel, yep. right, I'm not jerking around and I can. You got to release one and pull right, on one right. and blah, blah. All right. So those winches aren't working for me. So for $40, yep. you know, now where would I buy this anyway? Besides, yeah. forget I want to spend thousands of dollars to solve this problem. Where? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Yep. Where's that come from? Yeah. It comes from the consignment shop. Yeah. And it's fun. Yeah. It's fun for me thinking about, okay, here's the problem. How do I solve it? What do I do with this? I'm an old man, not that agile. I got to jump around to get these sails up and down by myself. So I got a downhaul on the main. Yep. I put that electric wind. Nobody needs an electric windlass unless you have a gaffering boat. This is a pretty simple layout, right? It doesn't get much more simple. This is it. Yeah. There was everything this guy owned for 38 years ended up in uh -oh. here. Oh. Uh -oh. It was all sail bags and all cushions and all of these boats are the same. Even yep. at 38, you and I were on the engine start boat. Yep. You should have seen it. That was down below oh, yeah. that boat. Everything that I put on in what, 1980 was still on a goddamn boat. <laughs> uh, I think that's one of the best tips I got was to just take everything off the boat. Everything. And then slowly decide what you want to put back on. You know how much came back on? 10%? Yes. Yeah. I think it's up there now. There's a thing about a container about that big. Yeah. Right? That's what came back on. Yeah. Janet and I were sitting in a, in a park lot because I had the boat in the water. Yeah. So we had a haul of heat. Kevin, I, we hauled all of this stuff up to the parking lot. Yeah. And I said, you gotta be, you know, we're not gonna load this in a van. Yeah. Then what? We gotta, right. there's a dumpster right there. <laughs> I mean, he had lines and stuff and electric stuff and yeah. old batteries. I mean, it was, but that's how they all are when you yeah. get on these things. The stove was here. The stove was right where it was. Looked like uh, my wife polished that. She cleaned that all up. It was all rusty looking. And I thought, and I didn't understand it because I thought it was stainless. I don't know what was on there that was so discolored. It looked like it had to be taken out and thrown away. And she sat here for, I don't know, a couple hours with some kind of special polish and some kind of stuff and polished that all up. Yep. It's amazing what that stove looks like. It looked like it was going in a dumpster. Yeah, that's great. Uh, she didn't get to the Charlie Noble stack on it, though. Yeah. That's yeah. still... 
That's the, what the whole stove looked like. How about the galley? We got a little uh, fold out. This looks like a little bit of cleverness here. Yeah, that's it. That kind of comes it's out. It's got a flip up thing. There was a alcohol stove in here. here this is a special Randall right. uh, based on your... Uh, there was an old alcohol stove in here. Look, talk about it looked like a fire trap. And I don't, I won't have a boat with alcohol. I've been into boat fires uh, over alcohol. I even set an employee on fire <laughs> with alcohol. It was actually funny. We put him out with a garden hose, his pants, but it was uh, good for a laugh. So that's propane. Okay. And then putting in a big fancy propane locker was not a, anything I was interested in. Yeah. So this is what you could have had yep. on the shields. Yep. That's it. I could have just had like 10 and all I all I make on there is coffee. They bought, my other daughter bought me a thing called a French press oh, yeah. or something. And it was horrible. <laughs> uh, what I, I like boat coffee. I just put the grounds right in a pot and boil it. Wait about four to six minutes and uh, drink it. A little bit of jet fuel. I just don't. Just don't drink the last uh, mouthful in a cup. The water system is non-functional. Okay. Uh, it's got a foot pump that's broken. Another consignment shop special. Yeah. I got to go to a consignment shop. I'll throw a bladder tank in here. I got bottled water, so I don't Would care. Would you ever drink out of it, even if it's like a new bladder? Would you drink out of it? Oh, no. Never drink. Never drink boat water, marina water. It's uh, You might as well be sipping water out of a sewer in New Delhi, all right? You don't want to, because that's those hoses that they use in our potable water. Yeah. They use garden hose junk. You never, never want to drink water out of a faucet. In a, I won't brush my teeth. Now, forget this boat. Yeah. On that cruise ship you just saw, in every head, there's two of them, yeah. there's bottled water yeah. to brush your teeth. Yeah. You don't want to brush your teeth to wash your mouth down. You know, and washing my face is even a yeah, uh, yeah. one of those. Yeah. Uh, uh, a the water that comes out of faucets and rings is, is terrible. You never drink it. Design Peter Lakers gets all the time. Yeah. I wish I would have did something like this on a Shannon 28. Yeah. Right? Because this, you know, is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. All right. Look at that. I put that battery switch in and I put that electric panel. This boat was yeah. all fused. Yeah. I got that panel out of a consignment shop, by the way. I did. That, that yeah, panel it's... that I put in there. Is not. It's missing a couple of breakers, and I haven't gotten around to it yet. And labels. Yeah. But I picked that up at Sam's up uh, in Whitford, Rhode Island. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Sam. Uh, the consignment. Yeah, uh, that's salvage. where that panel comes from. Yeah. I got all stuff all over this boat, uh, from because it's like a toy store to me. Uh, no, that's a fun feature. It's kind of perfect because you don't really need the headroom when you're seated. So. Yeah, you got to kind of crawl in there a little bit. It's, yeah. Somebody tried to hook a shower up at some point years, years ago, because there's a shower head in there. Okay. Uh, but I never saw any evidence of pressure water. It's got a foot pump down here. That's broken. Yeah. That doesn't work. That's defunct. And I couldn't find one, by the way, at the consignment shop. I might have to actually break down and buy a new one. No, don't uh, do it. I can't believe it. But, uh, no, I spent out in Cody Hunk alone. You know, it was me and uh, and me. Yeah. Have you had people, have you slept four on the boat before? No, no, just me right here. Yeah. Because uh, you got room for four to Yeah, four yeah, more, there's right? a full, actually, after, you couldn't get in this boat. The, there was just the wall. I had this boat for months before I saw the folks all, uh, <laughs> and those punks up there, at least months, maybe three or four, before we got all the junk out of it. Yeah. Uh, I laid down there, uh, never slept, and I just wanted to see how the bed, the cushions work. Yeah, I mean, uh, you've got that hatch right there for a nice yeah, little afternoon it's nice, breeze. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The hatch. I also have, uh, actually, it was with the boat. 
uh, wind scoop. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's great. I got a wind scoop. That, and all the junk that was on this boat that I threw away, probably the only thing I kept was that wind scoop. <laughs> um, yeah, there's a locker up there for my jackets and stuff, but it, it's easier for me uh, to grab it right here Yeah. Uh, than climbing up there. Nobody's checking how neat I am or not. It's, no, it's, charming. it's all I need. Actually, the, a lot of the people watching your show, uh, if you got two kids, and you're on this boat, you're going to have a ball. It's 30 feet. Yeah. Kids go forward, sleep. Folks, uh, adults sleep here. And the whole thing is like a thing. It's like a playpen. Yeah. My girls were always up forward. Uh, and they fixed up their own bunk. Everybody gets a bunk. Yeah. So they put their own stuff. Right. Uh, that's theirs. And they'd spend hours up there reading, coloring, whatever. Uh, any are you gonna do any uh, anything major as far as improvements or enhancements to the boat? No. Other than rigging for your single hand. No, I gotta yeah. change the head so Yeah. That's it. There you go. What could I do to this thing? Yeah. Make it any better. Oh, Look at me sitting here. <laughs> Not that it's got all the junk out of it. What else could I do to this thing? Yeah. There's nothing. That's in great shape too. Well, it didn't look it, by the way. Okay. Aaron and Janet. Yeah, just Aaron and Janet. They were in here with Clorox and soap, and this did not look like this. Oh, I, bet, I, yeah. I, I yeah. You know, you look at it now, and of course, it's a, this boat is a fake out. Uh, actually, I did put this in. There was, I love this little light. Yeah. I have another one, uh, oil lamp that I put out. It's a caros, was made for kerosene. I put oil in, yeah. uh, out in the cockpit. That's what I was sitting out cutting up with. But, uh, the outside of the whole boat needs to be oiled. Yeah. It's got that sea tall stuff yeah. on it. Mm. But who cares? Uh, you heard me say, if I'm on a boat, the people are looking at me, what do I care what it looks like? <laughs> the the, the, the yeah. decks aren't oiled. What? Who cares? Uh, I don't see it. And I'm looking at their pretty shiny boat that they've just uh, spent two hours washing and yeah. whatever the hell they've done. Uh, or I'm looking at a $10 million house in Martha's Vineyard, Edgar Town, in this thing. Yeah. So I got my big investment of $13,000 <laughs> and I'm looking at, and I got a better view. I knew when I bought it, uh, the Ford deck was soft, $200 worth of epoxy. Just drill, inject, yeah. drill. Tomorrow. Any particular epoxy? Yeah, they've got, uh, you, your buddies at Total Boat have got a uh, wet uh, epoxy. Yeah, the penetrating hits. epoxy? The penetrating epoxy? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. injected that, yeah. drilled little quarter inch holes, yeah. and I don't know, spent uh, four or five hours injecting. Yeah. I had, Two gallons of that stuff. It's not cheap, yeah, yeah. but it's you know it's all done. Yeah. Jump up and down on that deck, yeah. you know. And the only reason I put that in is I mounted another uh, block up there yeah. and I bolted through so that I could retrieve the mooring by myself. Yeah, yeah. You'll see that yeah. when I get back, because I'm by myself most. I want to be by myself uh, most of the time. Uh, you know, I got my daughter's fiance, I've got my other daughter and her husband, I've had them out, but then my wife, of course. But I want to, I sail this by myself. Uh, it's, uh, I love the conversation. <laughs> I'm very interesting when I'm talking to myself. I look like I'm a refugee from Woodstock 1969, and I sound like a parking attendant from a Brooklyn parking lot. Uh, so, you know, I'm not uh, keen on big conversations with folks. Uh, so. Not much uh, left to do other than maybe go for a little sail. That's it. Let's go sailing. Uh, let's Never do mind it. the stalking. Our conversation was really great and pretty lengthy, so I've decided I'm going to break that into a part two which I'll bring to you next week. We cover a lot of ground and we had a gorgeous sail on a late fall afternoon in New England. Walter's got lots of suggestions for 
those looking to get out in the water. If you're interested in more sage advice from Walter, he's got a book coming out, which we have a sign up for to be notified when it's ready to be released. If you go to yachthunting.com slash relax, you'll find that there's a sign up form to get notified. I will tell you that I have got an advanced copy of the manuscript and it is very entertaining and really helpful. It's his accumulated wisdom throughout his life sailing and building boats. And like most things with Walter, there's a good dash of humor. Special thanks to Rue and Rhett for helping to shoot and also to Tom and Kevin for helping to make the whole day a lot easier. And thanks as always to our awesome Patreon supporters. Your support means the world to me and makes this show possible. So thanks very much.